Hello. A while ago I discovered that you can use a joystick or a gamepad, the kind of thing that you would use to play a video game with, to control your ArduPilot vehicle, uh, your plane or your multi-rotor or whatever, over the telemetry connection, which I thought was a pretty neat idea. This is not something that I'm planning to be doing very often, but um, since it is such a neat trick and it doesn't take too much extra setup or hardware, I have one of these, not that one exactly, but a, sort of an Xbox 360 knockoff thing that I paid, I think about $15 or something like that. It just plugs in by USB. So I thought I'd give that a try today, um, which is what I've done. Now, this is one of the things, these things that I'm not really sure if it's worth making a video about because it's so simple and all of the um, instructions are listed up here and there's not really much I can add to it, although it might be just interesting for people to watch somebody doing it in a video to see, you know, just, just to look at it in action, basically. Um, and also the flying part of the video that I'll show you later on is not very interesting because you can't see the plane very well, unfortunately. So, yep, I know it's not a very exciting video, but here it is anyway. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, this is the docs. It's pretty simple. Um, it's probably this is the only page you need to look at. I think it's the only page I need. I looked at. Uh, but what you do is you come to the Actions tab on here and you click Joystick. Uh, Plug in your USB thing first, your joystick or your gamepad or whatever, uh, and you should find it showing up in here. And it will possibly not show up if you don't have the right drivers installed. And you know, it's the same kind of problem with any hardware that you add to a computer. But presuming you've used this before and you've played video games with it, which I have, um, and yeah, it should just show up there. Um, and then this enable button here, don't click that right away because, uh, especially if you have a plane connected. Um, this will let your gamepad take over control from your regular radio transmitter. So you don't want to do that until you've actually set up how your um, joystick axes and buttons are going to work, which is what these next set of buttons are here. So it's very easy. You just click on Auto Detect. So for Roll, I click on Auto Detect. And then I click OK, and then I move the stick for Roll whichever way, uh, whichever stick axis I want that to be. And you can see it's detected that one there. Uh, so you do that for roll pitch, throttle and yaw. And of course for buttons, um, you can't really have switches. It's not really set up to do switches, uh, you know, multiple position switches like a two position switch or anything like that. All you have is a button which you just put, press. And it turns out that if you have a lot of buttons, that's actually not a bad thing because it lets you set up lots of um, modes to use, which is what I did in my test today. But as you can see in this list, there are a bunch of other things you could do. You could set a relay or a servo. You can arm and disarm, uh, something to do with cameras, take off even. Um, yeah, a bunch of interesting things there, but um, I'll just show you what I did. So to change a mode, uh, you then need to click on here to say what mode you want that button to change into. So uh, you can see I've set that to fly-by-wire A Next button down here is fly by wire B. So again, these buttons you would click on auto detect to say uh, that you want to detect that button. Then click on OK and then press the um, button. You see it going green there? All right, and that would automatically fill in this number here, zero, which is already in there in my case. When I started this, they were all minus one like that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's a bit. That's it, really. That's all you have to do. Um, it would be nice if there was a little bit of info over here to show you what you have set that to already. See, when I click Settings, I can see what I've set it to. This window opens up over there for some reason every time. But also, if you forget which of these buttons you clicked when you opened that window, uh, for example, I just clicked on button three, I think there. Um, there's nothing in here to show me what I just clicked on so it would be nice if this title said joy change mode button 3 or something like that but anyway so when you've got all that done so click on save okay I'm just giving this a little test to see how it works at the moment I'm just in the normal radio transmitter control nice smooth movement you'll notice not too bad and then up here I'm going to select enable for the joystick and you'll see a little button pop up there so you can get rid of this window now 
and you'll notice I'm in manual mode and now this does nothing but my game controller will do something but <laughs> control is pretty rough so and it's it's delayed and it's rough let's see if I can get this in the shot better than nothing but I mean you really wouldn't want to use this in manual mode um, so I'll just try some of my buttons here this blue one should be uh, fly by wire A I think so if I push the blue button fly by wire A um, orange button is fly by wire B Cool. So my um, take on this is that it's quite useful to use as buttons just to switch modes. Um, so I have actually four more buttons on here that I could use. So I could have what is that? A, a nine. I could have nine buttons to switch modes. These buttons here don't seem to work, um, unfortunately. Uh, so anyway, nine buttons to switch modes would be quite handy because at the moment I'm stuck with just three. One of them, which has to be manual, I think. And what I've been doing until now is using the um, ground control station here to do uh, what is it mode there so see that there you can select which mode you want to go into and then you can set mode there so that's one way you can do this without having more than three switches to choose things on your radio all right i have my plane 70 meters up doing a return to launch loiter there nice and quiet this is the Skywalker Falcon with the 2200 3S well it's waggling a bit there eh I think it needs to go a little bit faster than that um, but with the 2200 3S it's very light and it's very quiet because it doesn't need to use much throttle uh, anyway so I'm going to enable the joystick here and immediately the th I heard the throttle change a little bit which is a little bit strange huh I thought return to launch was return to launch was supposed to completely control the throttle but I heard it change in pitch it's gone a little bit down now and that's probably because the throttle on this thing is dead center and the throttle on this which it just changed from is a little above dead center but yeah, I thought return to launch was supposed to be controlling the throttle completely. Anyway, uh, so let's try. I'll just let it turn around to go that way. And I'll try a fly-by-wire A. And I've just been twiddling the AHRS trim Y value to get a nice level flight in, uh, in fly-by-wire A. All right, so around about there, boom. Okay. All right, let's try fly by B. Well, can't really tell the difference there. Okay, so this one here, green button should be loiter. Um, it, you probably can't see that actually. Maybe you can right now, but it's stopped and it's turning back this way. And I've set the loiter radius for 70 meters. And it is indeed doing a loiter around the point at which I put pushed the button there, about there. That looks good. Right, so my fourth button here, number four, red, is um, a mission, just a simple mission. It's just gonna go from there to there to there so let me push that about here oh and it changed the altitude by the looks of it a little bit oh so loiter doesn't uh, change the altitude that makes sense so I think what happened there was when it was doing fly-by-wire A it was able to descend just a little bit because my return to launch loiter was 70 meters and the mission is 70 meters 
but in between those two times it's um, managed to sink a little bit. Alright, well it's doing the mission quite nicely there, I'll just let it go over there a little more because this is a mission with a do jump command after the third waypoint so when it gets to here it should go back over there it's so quiet I can just hear it alright that looks like the third waypoint and should go back over there alright well it looks like it's doing the mission alright uh, so let's try my last button which was return to home there we go no altitude change this time because it was already at 70 meters nice alright so while it's doing the um, return to launch waiter I might just try using the pitch and roll stick a little bit because this is a safe way to do it because if something goes wrong and I just let it go it should go back to doing the return to launch loiter. Alright I'll uh, do a full left roll. Yep yeah, that's good. Yep yeah, full right roll and I'll just keep the roll, full right roll on there like that. Yep yeah, looks like it's alright and I'll let it go now huh alright so when you're flying that that slow latency doesn't actually feel too bad because since it's not in manual mode you don't have direct control over it anyway the, there's a flight controller in between your movements and what actually happens right let's do right again Throw it right over the top of me. Right, I'll try this in fly by wire A mode, uh, B. Fly by wire B. And turn to the right here. Yeah, this is pretty good actually. I mean, you're not going to be doing any aerobatics or anything in these modes anyway, so it's just sort of a position adjustment really. And for that purpose, the low latency and poor. Um, resolution of the stick is, is perfectly adequate. Alright, let's try a bit of uh, fly-by-wire B, uh, fly-by-wire A. And full pitch down. Let go. Or oh, a little bit slow to let go there, but seems to be alright. So I'll turn around and see how close I can come along in front of us. Pitch down a bit, let go, pitch down a bit, let go. It's actually descending a little, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, quite a lot now. Pitch back. Pitch to the right, pitch back again. Oh, I think I need more throttle here. Pitch back. Oh, it's having trouble. Uh, Okay, so I panicked there and I <laughs> did return to launch. Not sure what happened there. Maybe just a little bit of a stall condition because, like I said, the throttle here was dead center. And when I was originally doing it, it was not dead center. That seemed to be a little bit above center was what was required for fly-by-wire A to keep its altitude. Um, but just there, when I was sensing that that might be the problem, I, I did actually put the throttle up to full, but nothing happened. Or well, it seemed like nothing happens. happened. Um, the wind is going that way, so may have had something to do with it, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, just uh, don't fly too close to the ground while you're using this controller, I think, and don't try and do any, any you know, fine <laughs> uh, precision movements like flying through trees or anything like that, and it should be perfectly okay, I think. Right, mission.